everyone and welcome to Already Cancelled. I am Peter, that is Tara, and we are going to talk about The Twilight Zone Season 2, Episode 4. It is called A Thing About Machines. So, full spoilers for the episode, as always. This revolves around a character of Bartlett Finchley. He is a sort of middle-class, middle-aged, sort of pompous asshole who's got a <laughs> TV repairman out uh, to fix his TV because there's something wrong with it, and as we learn through the conversation, it's been damaged multiple times in recent in recent months, as 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 his phone and various other gadgets around the house, and one of one of which times was him, him putting his foot through it, uh, and we discover that he has a fear of all of the devices in his house, all of the uh, you know anything mechanical, anything that was obviously obviously looking back this this feels like it's, these are all old devices as opposed to at the time where you know the phone and the tv would have felt like relatively new inventions but uh, mm-hmm. and i mean relatively uh so but he's very paranoid and he also is scared of being alone with them and ultimately he meets his demise when his car which counts as a device uh <laughs> drowns him <laughs> So that's the that's the general overview of the episode. Tara, what did you think of a thing about machines? Um it's a I would I would say it's a good episode. It's certainly not great. Um mm. but it's fun to watch and I'm a bit confused on where the line is between like machine and not machine. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I guess anything that's got a mechanical or yeah, circuitry. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be limited by electricity. That doesn't seem to be a factor because the light bulbs aren't trying to attack him. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but also like a typewriter. I mean, it has metal, but... <laughs> a typewriter, yeah, a typewriter is a weird one because a typewriter only functions if it's... If it's you know, manipulated. It doesn't do anything on its own. Whereas yeah. a clock... typewriter for me is like a it's like a wine opener or like a piano like <laughs> like you have to there's metal in it and but you have to move stuff i don't know yeah, yeah. i'm a little bit confused on that but, 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 well, whatever. I, 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 I wouldn't actually <laughs> bring up the metal i would say there's a mechanical reaction happening when you interact with it but it doesn't do anything on its own yeah, okay it's a tool it's a tool yes it's a tool that has a gear in it Probably more than one. Probably more than one. <laughs> um, so it counts. Uh, my favourite thing is that now that we're watching these episodes remastered and in glorious 1080p, is that when the electric razor is chasing them down the stairs, you can see the string that's pulling it down. <laughs> oh, that was so funny. I uh, I noticed uh, especially the car. The <laughs> mm. There's a scene with the car where it goes through the um, where it goes through a fence. And it goes into a bunch of empty boxes, you know, whatever, cliche. And But when the car backs out, it's got, like, this protective grill thing on it. I'm like, oh, that's an interesting car. And then it goes to the next shot of the car chasing him, and the grill's gone. I'm like, oh, that was clearly just there to protect the nice car from the fence that it had to drive through. They couldn't afford a car they could wreck. They had to keep it keep it in nice condition. Um, yeah, it's got, like, a roll cage on it. Yeah, I used to... See, when I was growing up, I used to think that, like, for some reason, the US just had random stacks of boxes and shit all over the place, because every single time there was a car yeah, chasing an old that movie... Yeah, next to our toxic barrels. Yeah. <laughs> every time there was a car chasing a movie, they always end up hitting boxes. And I'm like, where are all these boxes coming from? Yeah, or anyone has to jump out of a building. It's just you know trash bags full of pillows <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I, th- I had fun with this one it's not a great episode i think it's messaging is a little bit mixed i was trying really hard as i was watching it especially at the ending to try and decipher the you know because often twilight zone will have a theme or a moral or a message sure. or something i was trying to also and I thought, you know maybe fear of of losing something because of I don't know, something being, well, I, maybe more of a fear of not understanding the technology or how it works and then um, thinking that it's almost magic. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, I was going in a different direction with it because I because what the other key thing that happens in this episode, uh, first of all, he's a dick to the repairman, right? He's a complete pompous asshole to him. 
And then uh-huh. he's got like a, I think it's a secretary that works with him or something like that. But mm-hmm. basically he loses his temper and she's ready to quit and she's like wanting to go. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Could you stay here with me? Because I don't want to be alone. And he's and obviously at first I'm just thinking, okay, that's just him being scared of being alone with the machines rather than anything else. But then he called her uh, like, you little female with a mechanical face, right? He said that to her. Yeah. And then, and then there was one other scene that really stuck out to me to k- k- tie up with this one is when he doesn't want to be alone so he calls up like some old girlfriends or even just ladies he knows and he tries to ask one out on a date and finds out she's married he's like oh you're married oh well I'll send you a wedding gift that's delightful news um, and he like you know he throws his, his phone down and he's really upset and I was kind of reading from this that what this was really about was more he basically is someone who is obsessed with control and he mm-hmm. he's finding that he has no control over other people, particularly women. He's got no control over over women, and it's almost like it's become inverse. And the things that he's supposed to have control over are rebelling and fighting back. <laughs> like I, I, I know <laughs> it's not a perfect thing. Like I can't quite make it all fit. But yeah, it kept bringing. Well, up- I was thinking from because he had to use the telephone to contact these women, and they were all like with other people or mm. just not available for him. Um, he kind of blames the phone for embarrassing him. Like, he still thinks it's the <laughs> phone's fault. <laughs> How dare you, phone? How dare you? Yeah. How dare you make me look foolish? Or, <laughs> like, you mock me or something. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed. I Like, the... Uh... Like, I think that's an interesting angle. They probably could have done more with that. Like, more, more with the idea of why... Because, I, I, like, at least until the ending, because the ending kind of implies it was all real, I was kind of under the assumption that this was really just all in his head, because... Or, at the very least, it represented... Right, nothing happens until, like, the secretary leaves. Yeah. And then, immediately, the machines turn on him. Because it, it wasn't until the ending that they kind of confirmed... Because I, I was thinking, either it's not real... Or it is real, but it's more about representing his own insecurities and his own thing, rather than just being, oh, machines are evil and wanting to get them. <laughs> like, you know, literally that's all it is. Yeah. I, I mean, I was going with the fear of technology angle because this still is, like, not too far from atomic, you know, energy and mm. uh, fear of nuclear bombs or nuclear power. And, it, you know, there is a very real thing where we just kind of put a lot of trust in scientists and be like, well, they understand it. So that's, that's good. And it's not till like many years later where we go, oh, actually turns out that radiation is bad for you or something, you know, like we have to put our faith into people who understand it. Cause there's no way mm. I can understand how like, yeah, I mean, the, the cell phone really works or something like that. I can see there being some stuff in there about relying too much on technology, but again, mm-hmm. I think the message is kind of murky because of his attitude, which is which is why I was really veering into the way he treats other people and how it links up right. with like how he what he thinks is happening at least with the technology. Of course, uh, the interest idea that the car is one of the things that can do stuff because he goes outside and there's a little kid's been hit by his car that's just it's just not it wasn't driving, but it was just that you know the brake wasn't on and it rolled you know mm-hmm. through the driveway. Um, and the policeman's like, hey, he's need to make sure that breaks out. He's like, I assure you it was. And he's, you know, again, very pompous. And he, he threatens to have everyone arrested to his, you know, standing around watching and making sure everything's okay. Uh, and at the end of the, the episode, he is chased by the car into the swimming pool. And, yeah, it goes full Christine on him. <laughs> and what's weird about it is that I think it's I think it's meant to imply that the car literally gets in the pool and like pins him down. Because afterwards, they describe how nothing was actually weighing him down, and yet he was at the very bottom of the pool. I I read that as that he chose to stay down there. Like, he was too afraid to get back up, so he just let himself drown. Yeah, but he would float, though, right? After he, after he died. Uh, yeah, I guess. I don't know. But I thought maybe that he... I, the dialogue to me suggested that it was almost as if something was pinning him down. And even though yeah, we, we okay. literally never see the car go in the pool, and the car's obviously just there like not in the well, pool yeah that would be too expensive yes they can't damn it. I mean, they, were, they were afraid to have the car hit a fence so i mean like they're not going to put the car yeah. in the pool <laughs> i mean the car would probably There's be a roll cage to protect it from water so. i mean it would be fine after you let it dry out <laughs> i don't think so <laughs> uh maybe not okay fine um so the reason we don't have exposed engines on cars I'm sure, yeah, maybe maybe too expensive, but I'm sure, I'm sure there's waterproof cars just for for movie purposes. 
and all such things. Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah, maybe not as common in the Pretty 1960. Sure had a couple. <laughs> oh dear. Um, so. I mean that's basically the episode. It's it's a fun little romp. Like I, I think you get a lot of. I, I think the performance from the, the lead actor uh, is enjoyable mm. because he's such an asshole. Uh, and then I think uh, you know I think it's the scene where he's in the bathroom and it's the first time we see the electric razor uh, start. It starts just like floating Turns and dangling. Yeah. Which <laughs> and what's weird about that is that some of the other stuff that happens is like because he describes it as like everything like keeps tormenting him because he says the TV wakes him up. Uh, when he tries, you know, when he, eight o'clock. Which, by the way, yeah, he goes the to, clock kind of sounds like it's laughing at him or mocking him. What, what time? Do, what time does this guy have to get up for? Whatever. I mean, I don't even know what he does for a living. But what time? Well, does that's this... why he's so angry. Is he said he's he hasn't slept in four days. <laughs> yeah, no. But what I'm saying is, is what time does he have to be getting up for work that he's in bed and out by eight o'clock? Like that's that's pretty early for most people, unless he's got like because he, he doesn't strike me as a guy who's doing a night shift or like, or like somewhere. Right? Maybe his money comes from inheritance. Yeah, maybe it's just that. Yeah, like he's he's been he's been getting sleep taken from so often that he's been trying to sleep earlier and earlier, and the, the clocks and the TV. I just... mean, the secretary goes to his house to type something up, so clearly he works from home. He's got yeah, he's got the power to do it, make his own hours. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the TV like plays. But this is the weird thing though that I was going to get to is that the clock makes noises that a clock makes. It, it does it in a way that sounds mocking, but it's still clock noises. The TV plays yeah. some footage of someone saying his name, but it's still the TV function as a TV. The electric razor just becomes magical and starts like floating around, and you know, like it's, yeah, like it doesn't like it's not it doesn't just function as a razor. It functions <laughs> like completely as if it's like a mind of its own. Whereas the other things still, or I mean, the other things have a mind of their own. But I guess what I'm saying is. The other things still just use the function that they have to to scare him or torment him. Whereas the electric razor and think, the, you know, yeah, that's true. The the electric razor like literally floats. Yeah, it's you moving know, around. There's nothing. <laughs> and and oh, it moves around the ground like a snake. And sure, but there and is sure. a moment where he it's floating, and nothing else does that. Everything else is just turning on and off or yeah. writing a letter on its own. But yes, and sure I mean, enough, the car moves around on its own, which. Because yeah, you can do that. It has the wheels. But. Yeah, but but uh, but the car moving around on its own at least makes some sense because it has a car. Like it's, it's, it's yeah, designed the electric to move. Razor is just like <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The type again. The typewriter breaks the rule for not being a device that actually does anything on its own because there's no electricity involved with it. Uh, and then the car. Oh no. Uh, yeah, the, the time where it breaks the rule because there's no electricity, and then the, the electric razor breaks the rule of like it just functioning as it's supposed to to torment them. It does mm -hmm. all these extra things. Um, the car, I think you, you actually can get away with. I think the car, even though it does have kind of like a, a more of a direction, it is designed to move by its nature. So at least it, you know, it's, it's not doing something supernatural mm -hmm. other than doing it on its own, which obviously everything is doing. But mm -hmm. so you know, but most of these are are usually chuckle worthy. You know, there's, there's some fun moments. Uh, with with these things like taunting them, yeah, and because he's kind of a dick, like you just you just start to root for the machines a little. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, mess around with them, let's see where it goes. Yeah, so I would say that it's a really it's a pretty fun episode to watch. It's not a particularly great episode. I don't think it's one that's going to stand out as being overly memorable, but I think it's a decent enough. Yeah. I, I wasn't bored. I wasn't like it wasn't like last week where I was kind of complaining about like it stretching time out too much. This this had yeah. hijinks. It had a lot of hijinks to keep me entertained. Yeah, I agree with that. And I like the performance. I like the performance of the female, too. She was really good for the short scene that she was in. It. Yeah. Uh, the repairman at the start, actually, he uh, he's in another episode, and I know that... Yeah, I recognized him, but I couldn't figure out where it was. Well, I thought maybe he was on Star Trek, so well, I looked it up. I'm like, oh, no, I know him from another episode yeah. of Twilight. He's Trek. actually in four episodes, um, but the one that I, I know him from is because on the Blu-ray, there's an image from the, the next episode he's going to be in in this season. And mm -hmm. it's just someone's like, oh yeah, his image is in the, the thing. Like I recognize him, but it, it's but it's not the one that this this is from. So, uh, so I'm like, okay, no, the one where he's got that thing is the next mm -hmm. one he's in. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, he was an alien last season in one of the episodes. He was. Yeah, it may not have been as uh, recognizable. Maybe they had maybe had makeup on or something. Uh, maybe. Interestingly, at the start, when Rod Serling appeared, he did it inside the TV and not, like, in person, which was a nice little touch. Yeah, that nice was cute. Touch. Um, uh, at the end of the episode, he teases the next next one, and 
It's called The Howling Man. I think we're getting maybe a werewolf episode here. I'll, I'll tell you in a second. Um, he said something about it being okay for the little ones, mm-hmm. but you have to have some gall or something. Yeah. Uh, again, this was an interesting one where he started talking as if it was just narration, and then he walked into frame like halfway through his little speech, which again, so they're, they're kind of playing with what the format of his little uh, narration bits are. Yeah. Just little things, but they're experimenting a little bit. Here's a description. Okay. I, here, here's the experiment. Uh, Here's the description on IMDb for The Holy Man. Seeking refuge from a storm, a traveller comes upon a bizarre abbey of monks who have imprisoned a man who begs for his help. When he confronts the head monk, he is told that the man is the devil and he must decide whom to believe. Okay. Okay. Doesn't sound like a werewolf. It doesn't, no. It's just Holy Man makes me think of a werewolf, but... Um, yeah. Yeah, John Carradine's in this one, and we see a we see like a mansion looking entrance. I, I'm going to assume that's where the monks are, the like their monastery or whatever. Oh uh, yeah, maybe it's some kind of church. Yeah, yeah, I, I would I would guess that. So there you mm. go. That's uh that was this week's Twilight Zone. We'll see for the next one. I'm just going down to see what other episodes of Twilight Zone uh this actor was in because I want to know. Uh, I want to know what the first one. He was in the Purple Testament uh, last season. That was the one he was right. in. Which? Oh, that was a soldier was that one. The one with the guy who was kind of like the dead zone. He kept seeing where everyone was dying. Yeah. Yeah, they would have like a a flash on their face. Yeah. Why did I think he was an alien? <laughs> I don't know. Because there was no aliens in that episode. Maybe he was one of the aliens. He was the alien in the uh, Monsters of Doom Maple Street. No, but he's in the Purple Testament, which has no aliens in it. Right. I don't know. I thought maybe you were thinking he was one of those aliens. Oh right. Yeah. Know. Oh, maybe maybe that's what I was thinking. You're right. Uh, but yeah, so that's cool. And then he's in another episode uh, later. I think season four as well, as well as one more this season. So uh, there you mm-hmm. go. Uh, so yeah, let us know what you thought of uh, a thing about machines in the comments below. What's that? You got something to say, Tara? You got a smirk in your face there. No, I'm just trying to get my cat tail <laughs> out of the frame. That's fine. He's fluffing up the laundry that I admittedly haven't folded <laughs> it's next to me <laughs> so yeah uh, let us what you think of the episode like and subscribe all the usual stuff ding the bell for notifications you can support us by rating the audio podcast on apple Podcasts. you can also of course uh, support us financially over at patreon.com slash tv and you can do that for as little as one dollar per month and you get bonuses you get bonus episodes of some stuff uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just I usually make Tara do this but I thought I'll actually swear over by just continuing and not asking her to say anything uh, <laughs> it is confusing <laughs> yeah uh, and you get all the stuff you get a five dollar tier you get early access to some stuff including these Twilight Zone reviews and all that does keep the show uh, coming and keep all the different content we have coming so go and have a look and see if you're interested uh, otherwise get us on the Twitters at mail underscore fuzz for channel updates uh, check out all the content we have me and Connor have been working through Star Trek The Next Generation um we're actually a little bit ahead of these uh, so we're actually going to be running these through christmas in fact this episode will be up way after christmas can you hear my kitty cat <laughs> we can hear the cat purring <laughs> he's purring like right into the microphone <laughs> thank you once again for watching or listening we always appreciate it keep watching tv guys in the twilight zone